how fast I take a while. Yeah, there was going to be pouring down the horses street into the gutter to the mayor's office. And yeah. And then the yeah. blood ran through the streets like wine. And I, but I tell you, in, in Chicago, there was, it was a juice city. And, and I, what I can't understand from watching wrestling as I know it is it's a tribute to the heels. Bockwinkle and Stevens and, and, and your self-management and the Blackjacks. Bruiser and Crusher would beat these guys in three falls. They'd beat them up for the first fall and pin them. Then they'd beat them up for the second fall get juice on them. And then the Bruiser and Crusher get disqualified. And then they'd beat them up and pin them in the third fall. And the heels never got any heat in the ring. But the fans were ready to kill them. And the cops were standing facing the fans with their backs to the ring to make sure nobody, like you said. And there were no cops. Those were any train. Uh, All the any train trains out there at the mall police, you know. Yeah. Those <laughs> those <laughs> And, uh, you know, we come out to the ring in Chicago and they put the spotlight on you. Well, now you can't see the people. Now, here the cops. <laughs> so you're ducking and dodging all the way there. I remember my first time in Chicago. I was uh, managing a uh, Black Jack Lanza. No, the Assassins. Uh, against, I forget who. And they had this woman, and she'd come down the aisle, and she had a voodoo doll. And she'd shake it at me. <laughs> and had something else in this hand. She was this huge woman, okay? Um... Kind of was a little bit like Aunt Esther and Moose Choa. <laughs> <laughs> so she's coming down the aisle with this doll. So I had enough of her. She would walk behind me and pull my hair all the time. I had enough of this one night. So I said, sit down. And she stood up and dropped me like Tyson. <laughs> <laughs> and I rolled under the ring and I'm holding my nose. My nose is bleeding. She's telling me to come out from under the ring. I said, no. I we're going to come out. But that was, that was Chicago. <laughs> there, was, there was no corrals <laughs> under the ring or rails or anything. People just... It was wild. Then one thing we had was a box we go against uh, Vern. Got a oh. simple finish. Um, Nick slams Vern. Referee goes one, two. Vern puts his foot over the rope. I throw it back. Referee goes three. Vern jumps up. He said, I had my foot over. The referee says, continue. But I'm hugging Nick. I'm in the apron. Drop kicks Nick in the back, in the meat, club sandwich. I go to the floor. And Nick goes back. One, two, three. Yeah. As I jump up, some fans said, I'll get him down, and he rested his hand on the kid's shoulder in front of him and fired down to the ring. Oh, my God. And they shot a woman in the chest, one in the arm, two in the neck, and one in the thumb. But he never reached the ring. It got the ringside seats before that. And the article in the paper was about 1975, and it said all the kid said his eye saw was orange, and the kid was deaf. And the guy would come back, but no one would say, I saw him do it. So he didn't arrest him, but they put police around him to watch him, the detectives. But he never did nothing again. Well, that was, that was